How do I start? What instructional design model will I use? How will I design my instructional material to make it flexible? These might be some of the questions that keep on popping up in your head. That is why until now, you are stuck. If you are about to design your instructional material or you are having a hard time on how to start, then this video is for you. Good day e-learners! Welcome back to this channel. In my last video, we discussed on some confusing English words and phrases. Today, we will learn on how to design your instructional material. In this video, I will provide you information on the differences between distance learning materials and textbooks. And not only that, we will also tackle the things that we need to consider in designing your instructional material. But first, we need to define what is distance learning. Distance learning, which is also called distance education, e-learning, and online learning, is a form of education in which the main elements include physical separation of teachers and students during instruction and the use of various technologies to facilitate student-to-teacher and student-to-student -student communication. When schools started closing because of coronavirus, teachers would need resources to facilitate distance learning with their students. Likewise, students need books, educational kits, and other learning resources. The differences and similarities between distance learning materials and the textbooks. According to RATA in 2013, distance learning materials and textbooks have in common only in these two features, inclusion of diagrams and pictures, and inclusion of examples. Distance learning materials typically are divided into study units representing a week's work, include a study guide on how to use the materials and how to study by oneself. Include study tips, include diagrams and pictures, include numerous activities, and are tightly structured. While textbooks typically are divided into chapters based on topics rather than study time, do not include study guides or study guidance, do not include study tips, include diagrams and pictures but are limited, have few or no activities, and are more loosely structured. Distance learning materials address the learner as you, provide feedback answers, have a generous layout, have as audience the individual learner, attempt to meet all the needs of the learner, include reflection guides, address the learner directly, and include a wide range of learning devices. On the other hand, textbooks Use passive language. Do not provide feedback. There is no space for learners to write in. Serve a dual audience, the learner and the teacher. Do not attempt to meet all the needs of the learner because the learner has a teacher who will be able to amplify the printed text. Do not provide reflection guides. Address the learners impersonally and include a narrow range of learning devices. So how are flexible learning materials designed? First, Identify the instructional design model. Knowing the foundational principles behind instructional design can help you create more effective e-learning experiences. Here are the top six instructional design models that you should consider in the design of your learning resources. We have the ADI model. Analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. Second is Gagne's events of instruction model. The following are the nine events of instruction. Gain the student's attention, inform students of the objectives, stimulate recall of prior learning, present the content, provide learner guidance, elicit performance, provide feedback, assess performance, and enhance retention and transfer to job. Third is Camp Instructional Design Model. This allows instructional designers a significant degree of flexibility because they are able to begin the design process with any of the nine components or stages. In other words, designers are not required to consider the components in any prescribed, orderly way to realize the instructional learning system's design. The fourth is Azure model. Analyze learners, state objectives, select IM, media and materials, utilize media and materials, require learner participation, evaluate and revise. Fifth is Merrill's Principles of Instruction Model. David Merrill's First Principles of Instruction Framework integrates five instructional design principles such as problem or task, activation, demonstration, application, and integration. And the last one is 5E Constructivist Instructional Design. Engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. Next, plan based on the concepts and modalities of flexible learning. But before that, 
we need to discuss what is flexible learning. Flexible learning is a broader term that focuses on the design and delivery of programs, courses, and learning interventions that address learners' unique needs in terms of pace, place, process, and products of learning. It does not necessarily require connectivity. And now it's time for us to differentiate classroom-based, distance learning-based class, and blended learning. In classroom-based, the basic resource is the teacher. He or she may use other resources such as textbooks or audiovisual aids, but the teacher remains the central component of the system. In distance learning, the physical presence of the teacher is replaced by a combination of learning materials. Almost all the teacher's tasks are carried out by the distance learning materials. In blended learning, there is a scheduled time for face-to-face, and a scheduled time for distance learning. This means that all activities are well planned to maximize the face-to-face -face or distance mode. Are my students ready for flexible learning? What types of students do I have who will use these flexible learning materials? What are the circumstances of my students that I need to consider in the planning and designing of the materials? These are the questions that we need to address in the planning and designing of instructional material. To answer that, these are the things that we need to consider in designing our instructional material. First is the learner's profile. Here, we need to consider the literacy level of the student's study skills, ICT skills, technological tools, prior knowledge about the course, and the learning situation. These are the context issues that we need to consider. Some cities are under GCQ, ACQ, MECQ, and MGCQ. Some students are part-timers and have jobs. They do not have resources at home. They do not have any access to textbooks and other materials. They do not have access to a library or internet cafe. And they do not have access to the laboratory equipment. Then we have learning outcomes. Before you start writing Writing your materials, go back to your course syllabus. You need to have the following essential information such as course description, learning outcomes, and content list. There you have it, e-learners! These are the things that I wanted to share with you on how to design your instructional material. I know there are a lot of ways on how to design your instructional material, but the information I had shared with you are based on my knowledge, experience, and research. But I hope you learned something from this video. If you are new in this channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Happy e-learning! Till my next video.